you going that way, that's as good as a trap for me. Right. Right. So boom. There. So that is that distal pressure that lets me get through there. The, the idea is that I, if you have good, really good pengjing, it has to be fluid and continuous, right? It can't be a static thing. As soon as your peng becomes a rigid thing, then all kinds of stuff happens. But because you have the structure, but it's fluid, and the more fluid it is, meaning like 10 times a second, you're, adja you're adapting more than that. You're adapting faster than your mind or your awareness can, can, can do it. So evading, okay, what you, were just, what you were just doing there. So you were saying that, well, if you use your feet, you don't have to do it, but you still have to engage. Mm -hmm. Yes, if, it's, if I'm just attacking with a technique and you have a superior technique, that's a technique. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that if I'm coming in and I have connection, mm -hmm. then my connection is going to track you and it's going to move with you, mm -hmm. which is why, again, technique don't, don't work. So here, as, if I try to go to, to trap it, what you are doing is moving the, is, is adapting this to the centripetal point of engagement. So you're relaxing and engaging only with that. Mm -hmm. So I can't trap you because I can't push on you. Mm -hmm. But you're not getting out of the way. If you collapse, then now I can trap. Uh -huh. right? So if you're going to get out of the way, you still have to have this pengjing as if you didn't need to get out of the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you don't need to get out of the way, why bother getting out of the way? You just have superior structure. Mm -hmm. So just, just count on the structure. Okay. So if I push, now that's force. Okay. Yeah, no, more, more fluid. So find that centripetal engagement there. There you go. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, that's very different. And if I try to trap you, what happens is I'm going to try to make you apply distal pressure. Mm -hmm. And if you continually adapt, I can't apply that mm -hmm. pressure and I can't get around you because the pressure is always going towards my center. Mm -hmm. You're always, you are always letting go of any attempt of mine to trap you and engaging with punk. So you're engaging with that, that needle. So that needle is very, very fast at changing shape and changing, changing length, I should say. So, mm -hmm. so the, the, the needle, not that, now you're not letting go. That caused that. Uh -huh. right? So if you are resisting me at all, if you're pushing aside, do that distal pressure again, okay. then I release you, go that way, then you adapt and come in and chase it, and now you're trapped. Right. right. Okay. So now you're, mm -hmm. you're screwed. <laughs> so. As soon as you have any of that lateral pressure, that distal pressure, mm -hmm. the distal pressure will cause you to go laterally, mm -hmm. and then you start shaking back and forth, and then I have, you know, all of these the things that'll that'll just roll through you. Mm -hmm. So when you have really good pengjing, you don't need to do the technique because you are doing it already on a very very fine level. Mm -hmm. So when we say we don't use technique, what we really mean is the technique gets so good that it becomes method and become, the method becomes so refined that it becomes structure mm -hmm. so that you don't have to do anything, just mm -hmm. like you don't have to think when you're driving. Mm -hmm. You turn, you, you automatically, you, you, don't, you never oversteer, you always stay on the line because it's, it's just programmed, the protocol takes mm -hmm. over. So you're conditioning yourself to have this protocol that, doesn't, that you don't have to think about. Mm -hmm. Now, here, there's a little bit of distal pressure. See, mm -hmm. that's better, yeah. right? So that little bit of distal pressure, even just a tiny bit, right, is enough for me to slide in, right? right? right. So I, ha I can come past that arm. Right. So, and you saw how scary that was, mm -hmm. right? Just as soon as you know that, yeah. as soon as it's there, you realize that I'm through and yeah, there's, I'm totally open. yeah. And, there, and there's no catching up to it after that, because right. if I have that kind of engagement, mm -hmm. then as soon as I go from, from here, there, that's okay. I'm, You've, you've got that structure, as soon as it's there, mm -hmm. now I'm going to, right. to drill through. And you can, you can make contact, you can put your hand there, you can move laterally, but it's not going to affect me. Right. You'll just be like the person, you know, the kid being picked up going like this. Right. And that happens so instantaneously, mm -hmm. so instantaneously. It's a relative absolute. So, so this structure is what we're working on. And this transcends the technique in such a way that all of the other things, the strategies that we might have, are out the window. Mm -hmm. But if you can maintain that, and if we go slowly enough, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see how, see how you're going mm -hmm. sideways now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you'll be able to see where that forward pressure fails mm -hmm. because you're attached to something. You're, we went that way. Right. 
So what you want to do is avoid letting that happen. I shouldn't be able to move your hand side to side. I can only move your hand side to side or trap you because you are losing that centripetal engagement. You're starting to use distal pressure. Okay. As long as you always have that, cen that centripetal engagement, then any attempt that I, have, that I make to go to, to go to the side moves me but doesn't move you. So you let it go. It's like me trying to push the water out of the way. Mm -hmm. right? It's the ocean and I'm trying to dig my way through the water. Right. If you are like water, then when I try to dig, I'm just going to meet more water mm -hmm. and it's always going to support me. I'm never, I will never get to the bottom, mm -hmm. no matter how fast I dig. But there's lateral pressure. So this point, you had, you had the idea of forward pressure, but you had a distal mm -hmm. engagement there. So if you can maintain that centripetal engagement, then anything I do to try to go so sideways is going to result in you hitting me in the face. So, so in other words, so let me see if I can understand that. So if, if, if there's any sideward pressure, you, it should be your hand that moves, not mine. Like if there's any, any pressure. If, if, the, if there's any pressure, right. Yeah. If we feel kinetic energy, right? if, you're, if you do pung really well, it's like a hot knife cutting through the fog. There is no resistance. Mm -hmm. If there is resistance, if there is pressure, then the only thing that will save you is the structure and the fact that that tension engages your whole body. So that if, if I move you and you bounce, your whole body bounces so that you maintain that coherent unit, which is why people bounce backwards when they do those drills. Mm -hmm. Because, the, oh, I got pushed, I got thrown, but at least I'm in one piece. I landed on my feet when I got thrown. That's the idea. Or you do a good roll. You have that structure. You have that engagement. What you don't want to do is be thrown and be like this in the air. You don't want to be trapped and collapsing. And then you hit with pointy bony bits and your head collapses because it's not integrated with the rest of the body. If you have that structure, then if something gets past you and makes impact, then it hits your whole body. And your whole body absorbs the momentum. If it's really fast, hopefully you've slowed it down a little bit so that it doesn't have enough kinetic energy to cause damage and to break things. Right. But if you have that, if, if I come in and I, and I hit you, I hit your whole body, your whole body moves. Mm -hmm. If I can trap you, make that distal pressure. Mm -hmm. So you going that way, that's as good as a trap for me. Right. right? So boom, there. So that is that distal pressure that lets me get through there. Right. Okay? Because you were bracing outwards and, and moved. If you have that ability to stay fluid and you can stay ahead of me, right. so, so if, see that much, that's right. There you go. Right. As soon as I have pressure, there's distal pressure. Any pressure is distal so, pressure. Okay, so, so, what I said, so when you're doing this, so, when I, so what I was thinking is this is distal pressure, but any time I feel pressure, it actually is distal pressure, right. otherwise I wouldn't feel it. Exactly. Right. So now there's no distal pressure. Now, well, actually, well, was a bit. That would, see, yeah. that's evading. That's another, that's another thing. So you can't sneak by. The, the distal pressure is not the opposite of no pressure. Distal pressure is the opposite of centripetal engagement. Okay. So centripetal engagement means that there's only one point of contact, and it is the point that redirects me into the ground. Distal pressure means you're trying to hit me sideways with a needle. Right. Okay. Okay. So any pressure that you can feel is distal pressure. Pressure that you cannot feel is centripetal engagement. Okay. Mm -hmm. because, I, because I wouldn't feel it unless I were pressing back against it. That's right. Yeah. In the incorrect way. Right. So centripetal okay. engagement results in me being moved and not knowing why. Okay. Distal pressure is when both of us are feeling the pressure, we're fighting against each other. It's the right. bull's butting heads idea. Right. So if you can have, if you push me mm -hmm. and I do that, there's no pressure. Right. You bounce off me, you float on me. We say it's like water supporting a boat. Right. So that's the centripetal engagement. The centripetal engagement is, being, is maintained by fluidity, by the ability to change and move your mind. So your mind is constantly chasing that centripetal point. Okay. You don't make the centripetal point. The centripetal point is determined by the relationship between you and the other person. So when you push here, if I have my whole mind attached to all of that pressure, then you're going to push me off my feet. Mm -hmm. But if I have centripetal engagement, then when you push me, there's no pressure. Which is why when, when and you just watch the microphone, which is why when you push me, if I use 
there's, if there's any distal pressure, you'll move me. Mm -hmm. But if you push me and I have this fluid centripetal engagement, you can't push me mm -hmm. and I can mm -hmm. do this. And that means that there's, there's a transfer of momentum, but because of the ratio between surface area, your surface area and mine, because I'm applying pressure on a, on a hopefully an infinitely small point mm -hmm. against a large diffuse pressure, a lot of vectors on a big surface area, then you won't feel anything and I'll be able to move you and it mm -hmm. doesn't take any, mm -hmm. any effort to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know, when you do it right, it looks fake, mm -hmm. but it's, it can all be explained by Newton and Ar Archimedes. I really don't think Heisenberg or Bohr really have to be involved in, the, in this conversation. I think it's much simpler than that. So this, that's it, yeah. So, so, so the thing that, say, there's this evolutionary quality mm -hmm. that uh, we've evolved to have this structure that responds to, to stuff. That when we're about to break, we hold ourselves together. The stretch reflex, when you stretch your hamstrings, if you don't contract your quadriceps, your hamstrings tighten up because they say, oh, somebody's ripping our leg off. Mm -hmm. So you have to contract the quadriceps in order to counter that stretch reflex. And that's what I do to be able to kick so high. So, so uh, that, but that, that ability to hold the structure together, and, and the, we train that quality when we train that structure so that if I push one part of you, I'm pushing your feet. Mm -hmm. So that if you do happen to be tense, or if I do catch you uh, off guard mm -hmm. like that, I move your whole body. Mm -hmm. If it weren't that, and I pushed you, your hands would just collapse, and I'd knock your center of gravity off mm -hmm. of your base of support. Mm -hmm. But because you have that tense reflex, that structural reflex, so that when I do push you, your whole body moves. Mm -hmm. right? That saves you. That's, that's great. And that's, that's something that you need if the centripetal engagement fails. Right. If it fails to go to the ground, at least you want it to go to your feet. Right. And if it doesn't go to your feet, you at least want it to go to your knees, then you can jump and then you can bounce across the floor. And if it only goes to your back, well, you're starting to get into dangerous territory. There, well, maybe you can bend and neutralize. Mm -hmm. If it only gets halfway down your back, boom, mm -hmm. you're on your back mm -hmm. before you adapt. And if it only gets to your head, your head moves really fast and the rest of the body mm -hmm. has to be notified later. Mm -hmm. So any distal pressure, meaning here's the surface area, here's the centripetal point of engagement. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to engage with, not this. If I engage with this part, I'm giving you something that you can let go of. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. there. So you, the idea is you don't give the other person something they can let go of. Right. So here, if we play the, the we both play the dumb game, Mm -hmm. and you hold this tension and I squeeze it, mm -hmm. you let go of just one side, that happens. Mm -hmm. So I'm off balance. So there's clearly distal pressure mm -hmm. because it's going laterally. Mm -hmm. And you let go of one side, there. Mm -hmm. You let go of the other side, you let go of the other side, there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you push me, there. That gets you off balance because there's a little bit of that. So what we're doing is refining that, and we do that through technique. Uh, tai Chi uses Toi Shou. Uh, lots of hand styles use some kind of bridge hands. Wing Chun uses Qi Sao to mm -hmm. brilliant effect. I, I really should learn Wing Chun someday. It would, I'm sure it would come in handy. Um, but the, the, the idea is that you're constantly changing to that centripetal engagement. You're letting go of anything that can possibly trap you, anything that can push you to the side, anything that can redirect you over there to make your hands do this or this. You want to keep them there so that the needle is always going towards your center, towards my center, towards the ground. So now that reaching that you're doing there, you're trying to sneak by, that's a good technique. It'll get in there, but it won't have the, the, it won't have the ground behind it. Right. So the ability that people have to sort of sneak in, <laughs> see, I got you, mm -hmm. but I don't have anything behind it. Mm -hmm. it's, so like, it's like, you're like you take the needle apart and you hit the guy with one end of it. Right. it you really want the needle connected to the ground. Right. So, that's what, so I wasn't doing what I was talking about at the very beginning, which is just moving like with the, mm -hmm. with the, with the feet. Right, so moving with the feet mm -hmm. keeps that connection. That's when the needle is in, involved. Mm -hmm. Now, if, as you were saying before, when I do this and you decide to just let me go and roll, that's fine, but now you have distal pressure. 
Okay, so, so, how, so, so do that without distal pressure. To do that without the distal pressure, maintain this interpretal engagement, that's a keep letting, you have to keep letting go, keep letting go, keep letting go. So you have to, you can, you can evade, right? You can use your feet to neutralize, or use your feet to engage, but remember that every step that you take, every move you make, should be sticking to you. <laughs> it should be sticking, yeah. every move you make, every pung you, t uh, there, so that's it. So if you're going to neutralize, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. Okay. You have to still maintain that centripetal engagement, and it's going to feel very different. And as you move your feet, you're adding vectors that can complicate things for you, so it'll make it more difficult for you to feel, which is why we like to do stationary push hands so much. Mm -hmm. It's easier to feel the vectors this way. Right. As soon as you move, then you start to give things up. You're out there, but you're still in this foot until you're in this foot. Mm -hmm. You're never f f in this in space, so that needle is always connected to the ground. Okay. So if you move to the side, that's it. There, <laughs> there you lost it in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so that this is where the the footwork has to be driven by the core. Okay. So in that last one, so so not bad, not bad. Yeah. But to get around. Get around. I'm out of feet. I'm running out of feet. You ran out of feet, and you ran out, out of feet. hand. Yeah. So, so but this would be better. You can do that. So we have the patterns like this, and as long as you remember that you're not passing off a hand to a hand, you're passing off a centripetal engagement to a centripetal engagement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let it so, so from from here, okay. you can come up the that side. That's it, and you're maintaining that centripetal engagement. Okay. That's the idea. So, okay. That's better. Oh, I see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So take your time, take your time. Okay. So where are we here? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need more feet. Yeah, I <laughs> need more feet. That's it. There. So keep, you have to keep the lower back open, right, and keep the core. Remember the, the bagua walking we were doing, mm -hmm. where you grab the ground with your dantian? And so when you step, you've got to keep that open, that integration, so that, that this is always going into the ground. So keep the tailbone open, keep the dantian spiraling right just a little bit in front of the spine. Mm -hmm. That way when you move, you keep, you know, your core will work really hard. As soon as you start to do that, now you're sort of shuffling because you're in between doing it with the hands and doing it with the feet. Yeah, yeah. So getting that, uh, the better the centripetal engagement is, the more natural and instinctive that is, the more you want to connect it to the ground. So you're really going to have to start thinking about maintaining an, okay. maintaining that centripetal engagement with okay. the back, right? So you want to feel the spine doing what the hands are doing. So this connection that you're making here, you want to feel your upper arm and your elbow do the same thing. You want to feel that same relationship between the between the humerus and and the acromion, your, your your the vertebrae and your spine all the way down. So the tenth vertebrae and the eleventh vertebrae have that same relationship that this has. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's cool. And the twelfth and the is doing the same thing with the eleventh, and the the lumbar vertebrae are doing the same thing to the thoracic, and so on. And and you right through the sacrum. So. That's it. And then you'll feel it with the, if the hips are engaged and you've got that space between the pelvis and, and the upper condyle of the femur. And so you've, you've got that same engagement happening through there. So you have that centripetal engagement of the pelvis and the cartilage and the tendons and the piriformis and all of that stuff is engaging. That's it. And right. And the tibia, fibula not so much, but the tibia is engaging the femur the same way. So you have that centripetal engagement through there. 
So as the points of contact vary between the femur and the tibia, you are maintaining that centripetal engagement through there. So you feel the, we say we feel the chi flowing down through, or we feel the gravity flowing through. And when that happens, then there's less uh, conflict laterally between the different parts of the body. And that helps to, to uh, open up that proprioceptive map so that you have a better sense of the body as a whole unit. So that when I touch you here, this centripetal engagement goes, that's it. See, you can feel it in your, in your, in your shins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can feel that in your shins. Uh -huh. And that is, and for, for me, I could, from this angle, I could push as hard as I want, and I'm not going to move you. And you are connecting to my center, even though there's a buildup of pressure. See there? There's a little bit of lateral. It was mostly there. So if I add pressure, I'm changing the point. There we go. See, now I can't add pressure. I'm trying to add muscle, but I, there's nothing to resist against. Now I've got it. Right? As, soon as, as soon as I can feel resistance, there's lateral pressure. Right. And you've lost that flow of energy to the ground. As long as there is no pressure, then you can push me. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the magic of that. So the, the, the absence of pressure means you are engaging with a point and not surface area. It means you have that centripetal engagement and not distal pressure. So, so you want to push me without force. Mm -hmm. And that's where the challenge is. This is why we have to practice in this relaxed way, uh -huh. because that's what it feels like when it's right. Uh -huh. right. So. So that's that type of engagement. So for this type of engagement, for grappling, this is the nature of internal styles. It's about this ability to transfer momentum without uh, the impact that comes with a lot of kinetic energy, or with a lot with with that kind of thing. So it's uh, that's this aspect to it. But there's another aspect of fighting that Tai Chi people tend to forget, and that's the golf club hitting the golf ball. <laughs> that's all about kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. So people who do Tai Chi sometimes they get really good at push hands and really good at neutralizing, and then they don't. And they, they go, oh, I, I can nothing can get through me, nothing can push me over, and then somebody comes along and goes, yeah. and somebody says. Four, <laughs> but that's a different exercise. Mm -hmm. As long as we understand that's a different exercise, mm -hmm. then you can start applying the principles of one to the other. So I'm. See that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I was. So what happened was I started thinking, mm -hmm. and what I was thinking was, oh, this is going really well. I can feel it all going down. <laughs> <laughs> okay.